So if you let's start with the forms. If you wanted to get your retirement forms, you would just go under forms and go to retirement. And here's all the forms that we talked about today. And so the application is right here, the 28, the SF 2801. Okay, so it came up this time. <laughs> okay, so this is what, if you were to call me, uh, this is the link I would take you to. And I would tell you to go down about six or seven pages, and maybe more, right here, to page 12. This is where you start, you, you know, your name and all the information This is everything you would fill out. That's just your general information you already know about yourself. Here, section F is what we were talking about, the survivor annuity. This is where you're gonna initial, if you want to leave your, hus your husband or wife, the maximum survivor annuity, the full 55%. If you leave them anything less, you're going to have to mark two or three. So two is for um, if you, you know how much you want to leave them. So like I said, the least amount is $22 a year. And so you would just put $22 right there. And then if you're not leaving them anything or you're not married, you, initial number three. The insurable interest one is right here. And if you're going to leave a former spouse, that's number five. Any dependents that you have, you would put right here on section G. Dependent children, should I say. And then Section H is your banking information. A lot of people um, just staple a check, a voided check right here in this section. That's fine, too. Either way works. But this is the most important part, Section I. Here you sign and date it. We need that in order um, to process your retirement. And that is it for the application. So those three pages, let me see. You can, page 12, 13, and 14 is the application. Now, if you have military time, you're going to fill out the Schedule A, B, and C. Retired military time, Schedule B. And uh, workers' comp, if you had a uh, fight for workers' comp ever, you would fill out Section C. And then make sure you sign and date that one also. If not, you don't have to worry about that form. Here is if you're leaving your spouse anything less than the full. This is the form I was telling you all about. And so um, if the spouse says you and your spouse agree, they would just put no, I don't want anything. And then if they're going to get a partial, you would just tell how much of the partial they're going to get. So like I was using the example, the minimum is $22. You, you put the $22 here also. And then your spouse prints and signs their name with the notary. Another common mistake is the notary signature. 
um, in date is not the same as your spouse's. That's a huge problem that we get in our office. And that's all from this section that we need. All this other, these other forms is forms that I fill out at my office, all this. So you don't need any of those pages. So the maximum you would need would be, um, let me go back, 12, 13, 14, 15 if you have a military or workers comp, and 16 if you're leaving your spouse anything less than the full. Okay, and that's for the application. Yes? Okay, the 1152? Uh-huh. Okay, let me go back, okay? Okay, thank you. And right here under beneficiary forms, oh, you okay. click that. Okay. And so there's the 1152, those are the, the forms that I was telling you about. You, the only form that you would not need to com complete is the uh, 3102. Cause okay. Because you, you're not a FERS employee. Okay but the rest of those you would need. I think that's when I was looking over the forms, that's the reason why I couldn't find them because I was looking under retirement forms. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Not a problem. Okay, and the um, other beneficiary form, the 2808 is also under this page also. And on the other page, if you were thinking about making a deposit or a redeposit, if you're just interested in having it done, go ahead and turn in the SF-2803. And then under general forms, um, the third one down, the third line down, date of retirement, change or withdrawal request, that's where you find that at if you're going to change or withdraw your retirement. The 31, excuse me, the RI 20 97, that's your estimated earnings during military service if you wanted to buy your military time back. You would complete that and then send it in to get how much you made. If you're going to suspend or cancel your health insurance into retirement, the RI 79 9. If you are retiring during open season, or if your spouse works for a different agency and you're on their health insurance, you need to um, submit your spouse's 2809. Or um, if you're changing during open season, you need to submit the 2809. Because even though you do it in EBIS, let's say that you make an open season election in EBIS, it's not gonna flow because you'll already be retired. So you need to print that out and send it in with your application. Uh, and if you've already sent your application in, just print it out so that um, and send it in to us so that we can merge it with your retirement packet. And the W-4P here is down at the bottom um, for taxes. Let me go up a couple. The 2823, that's the life insurance, and that's also on the beneficiary page. Let me show you the common mistakes on the 2823. The common mistakes on this form is that this doesn't add up to be 100%. If you have three children, you leave them all 33%, that doesn't add up to 100 so you're going to need to put 33.3, 33.3. Uh, one person like put 33 and a third, 33 and a third, 33 and a third, so that it would add up to be 100%. So for it to be valid, you have to fill those out. You have to check. Um, please check the one of the following. So I'm insured because you're the one that's insured. 
uh, and then all three of these. I have not assigned my life insurance. If you haven't assigned it, if you've assigned it, you know, because that's like a court document. You have to go before a judge and assign your life insurance. Two people are witnessing my signature, and I did not name either witness as a beneficiary. You have to click all the three of those for this to be valid. And then you sign it and date it. Your witnesses sign it and date it. It could be the mailman and your next door neighbor. And then your agency would certify that everything is right. They would put their the agency receiving it. So if it was me, if you sent this to me, I would put the Army Benefit Center the day I received it, my signature, and my title. And if you get everything done except for this, this part right here, the agency, um, the Section E, it's not valid form. And so your old beneficiary form will pay out to people you don't even want it paid out to. Okay, here's the 2818. This is the only page we need, it's page four of the 2818. They fill out your information. If you're entitled to keep, are you eligible to keep your basic life insurance? You say yes. Do you want 75, 50, or no reduction? So we talked about this, the different reductions. If you do choose 75 at 865, it's free, but it will start reducing once you turn 65. Okay. The option A, if you have option A for five years prior to retiring, then you can take it into retirement. Other than that, you just put, I do not have, I do not have, I do not have. Or if you have it and you don't want to take it into retirement, you put no and no. Option B, the same thing. You go down here and say, do I want, like I said, if you are um, over the age of 65 and you don't want to keep your option B, I will go ahead and click yes and then put however many you have. I will put, you know, five as of right now because it would not cost me anything into retirement. It will start reducing every month, but it was, it's free. And then option C, same thing that covers your family members. And yes or no if you want it or if you don't have it. And then put how many multiples you want to keep into retirement. And just because I have five multiples of both of these does not mean I have to take five multiples into retirement. I can take anything less. But if I had one, I couldn't take five. It's got to be what you have or less that you're taking with you into retirement. And that's the only page we need of the 2818. So it's going to be, if you just push print, it's going to print out a lot of documents that you don't even need. You have a lot of scrap paper. Okay, so that was the application, the SF-2801. If you're going to do uh, update your beneficiary forms, 2808. If you are you want to suspend or cancel your health insurance, the RI 79-9, the 2818, the 2823, and the W4P, those are usually the standard documents that we we receive. If you have military time, we need a copy of your DD-214 or your orders. And if you're married, we need a copy of your marriage certificate. So I was going to get my cat card and put it in, so um, yeah, let me go get mine out of my purse real quick. Hold on.
So if you're requesting an estimate through through our link, you go to HR link and this is request an estimate to be prepared by your HR human resource um, office. And so you would click that. Okay, so I'm not within five years. So I can't get one right now. But I have been playing around out here to see if we got anything out there. Nothing. Okay, so we do have calculators out here where you can kind of do snapshots of what you would get. And but HR link is where you would request one online if you needed it, if you needed one. And let's see what else. You have any questions about EBIS? I have one question. Okay. Um on the HR link, mm -hmm. so is that estimate going to be mailed to us or do we have to go back in there and find it <laughs> you come back into the hr link and it will be right here they normally send you an uh, email to let you know that it has been posted to back into your um hr link okay thank you not a problem Did anybody have any questions concerning our website or EVIS? <coughs> okay, so if you if you want to go out to EVIS and play around, please do. Now, I do know that like, this is the link I was telling you all about with the forms. It does, you can't, if you if you click on, let's say, I was trying to think of something, you guys. Here's the application. You can fill it out in here, but it's not going to let you um, submit it in here. And so this is where um, a lot of the confusion was, is because a lot of people thought that they were submitting their retirement. Can I put allow once on here? I don't want to mess up his computer. So then there it goes, and it tells you, and someone had asked me this, it's always going to populate the Army Benefit Center, and then you can just fill in your information there. You fill in whoever you want. So it'll it it'll at least auto populate some of this. Okay. That may make it a little bit easier. Okay, Mr. Hunt. I don't I believe if no one has any more questions, you can take over. All right, pending any more questions, then uh, that's going to about wrap up today's session. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here. I trust it has been beneficial. You find it useful information. Uh, and if you have questions, then, of course, uh, you're welcome to come to the CPAC and ask us or uh, Maisha and her team at uh, ABCC. Uh, those who have one.